I set up a planaria trap in my aquarium last night and caught hundreds and hundreds of planaria. Follow along in today's video. I'll show you how to identify, trap, and eradicate planaria from your aquarium. It all started a few weeks ago when my client and I both noticed that he had some flatworms, planaria, in his aquarium at his office. It didn't seem like there were too many of them, so I wasn't that concerned. But after setting a trap last night, I realized that this infestation is actually far more out of control than I realized. While there is some discussion about how bad planaria are, it's undeniable that they're not a good thing to have in your fish tank. They exude a toxic residue, which can uh, kind of paralyze shrimp. Maybe not always a strong, healthy adult, but maybe one that's molting can be susceptible. Baby shrimp eggs, they can even go in and take the eggs right out of a buried female. It's kind of arguable whether or not they're actually bad for your fish. I think most large fish will just eat a planaria if they get the chance. First things first, you want to identify that you actually have planaria so that you can eradicate them. And they are actually pretty easy to ID. They're flatworms and they have arrow shaped heads. There's not really anything else that's going to resemble them in your fish tank. The first thing you're going to want to do is trap as many of them as possible. If you go ahead and just drop in some planaria medication, then all of them are going to end up dying likely in the substrate layer, which is where they live for the most part, and you're not going to be able to pull them out. This is going to result in a potentially large ammonia spike for your tank, depending on how many uh, planaria you actually have in there. I have this trap. It's a pretty standard design. It's basically a glass test tube, and then there's some holes in it. These holes taper off kind of like a funnel trap. So when the planaria go into this trap, they're unable to find their way out. You're gonna to wanna to bait them, so fill this trap with uh, some fish food or chicken, beef, or whatever, something meaty. I used some freeze-dried brine shrimp because that was the stinkiest thing I had on hand, and it really, really attracted the worms. So drop this trap in and come back the next day. Oh my God, I have never seen this many planaria jam-packed in a trap. I'm really, really glad that I decided to trap them before treating because like I mentioned, you know, these guys are all going to rot and this many planaria going to cause some serious damage to the water parameters. When disposing of your planaria, it's a good idea to toss them outside as long as you don't live by a water source or your trash can is a good option, but you don't want to dump them down your toilet or somewhere where they could get introduced into a local waterway because for all we know, it's an invasive species to where we live and they could harm our local invertebrate populations. After pulling out all the worms, it's time to treat the tank with no planaria. This is a very natural medication, if you can even call it a medication. It's derived from some like beta nut extract. You follow the directions, you mix the powder in a little bit of water and then dump it in the tank. You do this for three days in a row. And then on the fourth day, you do a big, big, big old water change. And that's just to make sure that if there were any dead ones that we couldn't pull out or get sucked in by the filter, you know, stuff under rocks or in the substrate layer, these worms are really tiny and they're good at hiding. The fact that we had so many in this tank that went undetected is kind of an indicator that they're living in the substrate layer. If there are eggs in the tank, then chances are they are not going to get wiped out by this medication. So it's a good idea to do a follow up one week after dosing the initial time. The second round of meds is not just a safety measure. We really want to make sure that we're wiping out all these planaria. Otherwise, you're investing your time and money for nothing. So we know that there's going to be some survivors because I've treated with one round before and it looks like it's okay until a few months down the road. Always will come back. So make sure you get that second round just to cover your bases. 
One last thing to talk about is where do these planaria come from and what can we do to prevent them from coming back into our tank? Planaria are a pretty common hitchhiker. If you buy anything from your local fish store, that's where they could be coming from. They attach themselves to plants and sneak their way in, maybe as adults, juveniles, or even eggs as possible. It's less likely, but it's also possible for planaria to come in via shrimp or fish purchases. Most likely it's gonna be plants. While a couple of planaria are probably not gonna be a big deal for your tank, it's really when they start multiplying like crazy that they cause problems. So one way that you can prevent them from multiplying like crazy is just to be cautious with how much food you put in the tank. I know that tanks that are overfed tend to see huge booms of planaria. Tanks that are underfed might have a little bit of planaria in there, but they never really seem to get out of control. That's it for today. Just a quick video on planaria. Let me know, have you ever had planaria? Did you deal with them? Was there a better way than I've suggested? Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate your time. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, watch some other videos. Until next time, see ya.